from Tally to Cali. It's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hudjavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What up, everybody? Welcome on into Wake Up Warchant, presented by Zaxby's. I'm Aslan Hudjavandi. He is Corey Clark. We work for Warchant.com. Use that promo code FSU New Era to get 50% off an annual membership if you're a first-time subscriber. The new era not upon us yet, though, Corey. Not quite yet, but I feel like we're creeping ever so much closer to it. We're coming they paint, to you. They painted the field and everything. I know. I know. Uh, I just, you know, well, a good thing that we're actually doing the show here in your car in the parking lot of the Moore Center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the headlights off. Yeah. Don't anybody, we don't want anybody to know. And we're parked right next to the head coach's spot. So we'll see who they bring in. I think we should do the show literally in the car one of these days this week at, out front of Moore. If, uh, let's say if it's not announced by Wednesday, I think the – Did you go to Moore? Did you hang out there at all on Monday? No. Oh, no. I thought you said you were going to. I was joking. Oh. Did well, you, you should do that. All right. Well, I, I think we kind of frown upon guerrilla journalism with War Team. We're pretty oh, man, by the book. We, do? we got a pass? They gave us a pass. We're allowed to. We're allowed to park there. Well, no, not that. Just, just I'll hop out the car and, and if I see David Coburn, I'm like, hey, DC, DC, what up? I mean, you know, Hunter, your check at Arkansas is tweeting and stuff. Can you just at least let us know what's going on, man? Yeah, yeah. You know, I would do it if David has Aslan. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Just have run up to him with your camera rolling. I mean, care to comment? Care to comment? I want to do. I want to do that. But like, like DC, hey man, Bubby, can we? You know. Just give us a something. Ultimate Simple Sports Source, man. Yeah. The voice of the people. Maybe I'll do it later today. I wonder if he'd run away like uh, Spetman did after Bowden was fired. Nah, man. David's that got was, David's got spine. That was, Steely spine. That was something. Really? That happened? He ran what? He ran away. like uh, So they made two players available, Dakota Watson and Christian Ponder. This was, what is that, 09? Yeah. And uh, didn't, let any, didn't let Spetman talk. Obviously, Thrasher didn't talk. And, uh, but Spetman was there. And so as he walked out of – when they were done talking, he left. Where was uh, it at? The museum? Uh, I guess it – yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it was in the museum. Okay. So people that don't – and why would you? Uh, they call it the museum. It's not a museum. It's an empty room. I think they may have had plans for it to be a sports museum, but there's nothing in there. No artifacts. Except chairs, yeah. In the Billy Donovan signed basketball that I stole Saturday night. What? Um, so – and that's on the first floor of the Moore Center, and then it's right by the cafeteria, and then what would you say to the elevators? 50 yards, 40 yards? Yeah, about 50. That's and you good. walk – if you have been in Moore, you walk through where they have where they do have some stuff. They have the the national championship trophies and some Heismans and some the, stuff the on display. The grand foyer. So he left out of there, walked. It was Andrew Carter for sure who was with the Orlando Sentinel. Maybe Bianchi, maybe Andy Staples. I, I can't remember who else would have been. I think it was Staples. And I was there, and we're just following him. And I know he's not going to say anything. He's just so uncomfortable. But Andrew's like, care to comment? Do you want to comment? Mr. Spetman, do you want to comment? And he walks straight to the elevator, op- hits it. As Andrew's literally right behind him, he's hitting the button. It opens. He walks in the elevator, turns around. Andrew's like, would you like to comment on firing Bobby Bowden? And the, just the door shut. <laughs> not a word. Not a word. Oh, man. You know it's not a word as well? Uh, indescribably good food. Which is what three, Zaxby's it's packs. Three words, isn't uh, it? Yeah. Shout out to a friend of the program. I guess, you know, I probably use that term too loosely, but we do appreciate the, the loyal folks who do post on the Renegade Express and who do tweet at us and post on the message board. Um, Sabaxley, you know, uh, tweeted at us the other day. After depressing Saturday, there's always Zaxby's on Sundays. This is obviously from earlier in the weekend. I didn't, I didn't right. talk about it yesterday. Uh, loves listening to Wake Up Board Chant on Monday and the excitement of a new coach to pick up our spirits. And it's him and his uh, looks like his lovely wife. And I see a, I see a, I see a wings and things. I also see my personal favorite, the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue Filet Sandwich, which is still going on there. And um, yeah, man. All right, good man. Just good. Me, oh, gosh, he's, he's the one in Thomasville. It looks like that's the one in Thomasville. All right, but he's in Dothan. I don't know. I have to double check. Maybe it's one in Dothan. He's a Dothan. He's a Dothanite. One of the good folks. One of the good All people right. in Dothan. Well, anywho, so. Um, Couple nuggets have been posted by Gene, and I mean, I'm going to have Gene on the show sometime this week. We got to bring him on. I don't even want to talk about who it's going to be. I just want to talk about what his life is like right now. Um, I really hope he doesn't read the message boards, but I know he does. It's it's the it's the pulse of the nation, man. But 
you know, a lot of folks giving him a hard time. Like, well, what, this is just a bunch of word salad. You know, you're hedging everything. Uh, you know, where's the real updates at? Uh, I mean, there was some, there was, there's, I thought there was actual meat in these updates that, that have been posted uh, on, on Monday. Yeah. It's, it's nothing, dr- I mean, I, th- I think people are waiting for the, you know, barring unforeseen for- circumstances, Florida State is set to announce coach blah, blah, blah on this day as the next head football coach at Florida State University. Yeah, man, and it's just, I think it, it's, I don't, it's on the message board. It's specific, specific, I think, really to War Chant, and um, because there's so many people that are sort of in the know or think they're in the know, or they know someone that they think is in the know. And so how many posts, I, I don't know if it's at this point, it's become like a running joke, but every other thread has somebody in there saying it's still Bob. Mm-hmm. Quit worrying, it's still Bob. It's still Bob. And That's I think a it's joke. That's a, a joke. Running yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah. But I do think there are some people that genuinely believe oh, absolutely. that it's still Bob Stoops. Or Matt Campbell, or James Franklin. And, um, you, you know, Gene just has to go in there and, like, it feels like he's just – an extinguisher putting out fires. I mean, there's a chance it's one of those three. Um, I think Campbell's the be- obviously the best chance of those three. But, um, man, it, it, I just – it's never – it's not great news. He doesn't get to deliver great news. It's just who they're not getting. But yeah. I, it doesn't mean that uh, – you know, I think in his last update, he, he talked about maybe there had been an offer made and they had been turned down. Well, if that's well, – that was, that was his theory on it. We, theory, yeah, right. Yeah. But I think – it, the only two people in my and I, you know, I really want this to be over so we can start talking about the actual head coach and not just the speculative nature of this uh, search. But um, the only two people that it would make sense to turn down Florida State are Stoops and Franklin. Anybody else that's been mentioned, I, I, I couldn't fathom why they wouldn't come to Florida State, and I think they would. But if you got turned down by Stoops and Franklin, all right. No, no harm, no foul. There, those are good. Those are good guys to go after. Really smart guys to try to go get. Right? They're, I'm who's not a, a, who's yeah, I'm not a big James Franklin guy, but I, I know he's got a decent resume. And by the way, I should, I, I do stand correct. A lot of people tweeted at me and pointed it out last week. I talked about he never won anything big, but he did win the Big Ten in 2016. There you go. So that's something. Um, and uh, yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I think those two guys are your your top tier guys, but they're superstar tier guys to me. Stoops especially. But Franklin, man, we're, you know, he's a guy that I think could go to almost any school in the country save five. Like, he's that big a name, and he's done that good a job at Penn State, I think. Um, but it, and he's also from Pennsylvania. It just wouldn't – it just – none of it really fit. Um, so, you know, that probably means he's going to be the next head coach here because that just doesn't seem like it would fit to me. But I don't think Florida State fans should think like, oh, golly, we're striking out on everybody. I think they, in my opinion, if I if you, think about it, if you were and I, if you were Coburn and I was Thrasher, mm-hmm. the first person we go after is Stoops. Right. The second person we go after, you know, if we're told James Franklin is interested, like if we if we hear from an inter- intermediary that he's interested, well, absolutely, we I anyway would really pursue yeah. that and see what it takes. And we go back and forth. I make an offer. He sleeps on it and says, "No, I want to stay here in this awful weather." In Happy Valley, which is an ironic name, obviously, because it's Unhappy Valley. Mm, nobody absolutely. nobody enjoys that place. If you want to stay there. Highest rate of depression in the entire United States. If you want to win nine or ten games, that's your ceiling. Sure, man. But uh, once he says no, then I think now you're on to the next one, and the next one I think you're sure is going to say yes, I think. I, can't, I just can't envision a scenario where if they offer Matt Campbell the job, my man is going to stay at Iowa State. Yeah, I agree. The only way is if the Bears have called him. And said, hey, man, as soon as we're done here, we're coming after you. You know what I mean? That's the only way. Matt Campbell will not – if he will not be coaching at Iowa State next year if Florida State offered him the job. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah so, um, But I don't think it's like they're going – I think Matt Campbell's a really good coach. Norvell might be an incredible coach. Yeah. He's just not exciting. Well, I mean, people are saying Matt Campbell's not exciting either, but I think oh, that's I think, being short-sighted. I think, yeah, right? I think Campbell's yeah. done a really no, good I'm, job I'm there. I'm stoked. I'm all about the Mats. I mean, I, I would literally – Rule is, is number one for me, then I would say Stoops two, and then uh, Matt Campbell's number three for me. Okay. That's, like, that's my top three. All right. Um, spoke to one of my coaching buddies in Mississippi who was uh, – because he's an Ole Miss guy, and he was wondering if we're going to get Norvell. And uh, I'm like, yeah, we really don't know. You know, things are kind of, you know – Obviously, fluid situation. He was like, "Let me let me ask you, Aslan. Like, who do you want to be your coach?" I'm 
I'm like, I'm like, I want Matt Rule, man. And he's like, man, he's like, great minds think alike. He's like, I'd like Matt Rule. He's like, he'd come there, he'd fumigate the place, get that thing back up and run within three years. I'm like, I know, man. Does he dip, this guy you're talking to? No, no, he doesn't. But the, I think the your, twang, your accent, your, it feels like there's dip in his in his gum right there. He he grimaces when he talks. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, okay, he's a yeah. great, he's a great man. Um, and then ends the conversation. He's like, if you ever need anything, in Mississippi man, you let me know. All I'm right, like, I'm, I got you, man. I got you, man. Right. So um, I'm like, yeah, you take Norvell, man. Go ahead, take him, take him, man. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I I don't think I really wonder like if there's a pie chart. I think I think it's 80 percent. The fan base is just anxious. They they want to know. Who it's going to be already? Then I think you've got ten percent that are of the belief that Florida State is is striking out on candidates, which I mean they could be. You know they did. Um, you know I mean they most likely offered Bob Stoops, and it sounds like Penn State, the, a Penn State website, has come out and said that uh, they've heard that you know Franklin has been you know was, was offered at some point, but he turned it down. But Florida State is not. Uh, that that hasn't been enough to turn Florida State away. They keep coming after him, but he's the the the, the Penn State publisher is under the impression that this is all. Uh, there was there was there was a, either a summer they talked about signing an extension over the summer and he wants a lot of uh, sort of promises in terms of faculty uh, facilities things right. of that nature so this is all kind of bargaining he thinks but um, so yeah the Penn State folks don't but then, you know Florida State folks didn't think Jimbo was going to leave in seventeen either but I it just doesn't make the Franklin doesn't make sense just because of the, the ties he has to the state of Pennsylvania what he's accomplished there and and you know what he's trying to but look get at the there. what's the realistic pool of candidates and I'm not talking about just Florida State or Florida State being on the cheap are too cheap to what when you look at the the current landscape of college coaches we've talked about this before there's 15 or 20 coaches that I think are just not they're off the table they're not going to leave their current situation because you know Florida State you know is is on even footing with them I think Florida State's better than most of those jobs potentially but right now it's not you know obviously Kirby Smart wouldn't leave his alma mater for Florida State Mm -hmm. Saban Dabo you know, there's probably t- ten or twelve. Peterson, he's just going to quit. Um, <laughs> yeah, Washington, crazy. Jimmy, Jimmy Lake is defensive coordinator, which a lot of people were banding about. Is maybe Willie would try to bring in as defensive coordinator had he still been the head coach here, is going to be elevated to the head coach at Washington Huskies, Washington State. Yeah. So, of the current, like, there's only a, a there's only a finite amount of names that are going to be real candidates for a place like Florida State. Florida State's going to get the best of that group. If Stoops, Stoops, what do you want them to do? I mean, they can't kidnap him and make him co- coach at Florida State. They can't kin- kidnap James Franklin. And right now, Penn State and Florida State are on equal footing as far as uh, programs. I mean, they are. Oh, Penn um, State's probably ahead of Florida State right yeah, now. Yeah, but I, I just think overall in the history, I think, well, you have a, I think you have a better chance to win at Florida State. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Uh, well, but it's Penn, happened. But it's Penn happened. State is a power. It's a power. Again, I'll keep pointing to it. Look around the country. What are these other schools that you consider football powers? When did they go get an, a power from another school? You don't get coaches from powerhouse programs. They Oklahoma don't, got an OC. Yeah. Before that, he, the Stoops was a DC. Yeah. A Florida State got an LSU OC. Or I guess he was their OC at the time, but you know what I mean. Clemson um, promoted their interim coach that was a receivers coach. Florida Dabo. got Mississippi State which isn't a football power. Before that, they got Colorado State, which isn't a football power. Virginia Tech got Memphis. Um, it just on and on and Texas on. Texas got Houston. Penn State got Vanderbilt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Georgia got an assistant. Clemson got a wide receivers coach. You look around the country, man, you're not the, – the odds, nobody's going to be – it's not going to be other than Stoops. It may be Franklin, but I get your point. You're, you wouldn't be fired up. I think it would be a great job. But nobody they name – is going to just be a wow hire. Right. It's just not. That's not how this that's not how it works. That's not how this um the hiring process works. It's not how college football works. You don't leave one college football program for another. And I don't know how many coaches out there would be a wow anyway. Ten, eight? Like Saban? Who? Who else? Yeah, well I mean well you you pare it down to what you're talking about, who are legitimate candidates they can go after, then how many of them are could, the, the pie gets smaller as you keep yeah. whittling the stuff down. So yeah, I mean Stoops is wow. I don't. I don't think James Franklin's wow. I mean, I think it's wow in terms of wow. Like he left Penn State. That's crazy. I don't think it's like wow. Florida State, watch out, sure thing. Back on top, playoff bound within the next four years. Like I don't. I don't think that's the case with James Franklin. Um, but yeah, I mean, what about Gundy? Where's my man Gundy in all this? I they thought look, his name was mentioned a couple years ago. Yeah, to Tennessee, and I. 
I think he was really thinking long and hard about actually going to Tennessee before they got. Uh, you want to talk about it. a guy that's banging his head on a ceiling? Like Oklahoma State isn't going anywhere but where it is. Yeah. It's been around forever. They've had great players. They're never going to be the best team in their own state. At some point, he's got to get tired of that. But I don't. I mean, I don't even know if he'd be if Florida State's even interested in him. But man. They win 10, 11 games. They have those hard-hitting, ferocious defenses that <laughs> Oklahoma State's known for. That's, yeah, the guy that just kept saying uh, the last two days how sick I am of watching this defense. I'm tired of watching just a soft, passive defense. And then, I, hey, why not hire Mike Gundy? You can tell defense means a lot to him. I guess, is, is that like a disconnect then that you have to, at a place like Florida State, which we believe is a, a top 10 program, top 15 job, that is there a disconnect there in terms of of thinking that highly about this job, but then realizing that whoever you're going to hire most likely is going to be some of the you're, you're projecting to be something greater than what they are currently. Absolutely, that's exactly what the hire is. Again, who did Texas hire? Like well, people like- pointed out that we shouldn't, and I agree with the whoever tweeted this at me, shouldn't focus on Herman being a Group of Five head coach. He his stock is more based upon what he did at uh, Ohio well, State. That's a good point. Yeah, he coordinator. was an OC at Ohio State, and he went to a, he was a head coach and did well there. Yeah. so that's true. Um, but man, I I don't think. Well, Alabama's probably different. Alabama's going to be a whole different thing when Saban leaves. But they're getting know, Dabo. It's going to um, happen. I mean, maybe I'd be crazy if he left Clemson to go follow Saban's shoes. Like you, there's nothing you could do at Alabama that they'd be happy with. They're used to playing for championships every year. What 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 would you gain from following that guy? You're from Alabama, going home when Mama. I mean, you you're telling me you cannot see Dabo Sweeney on the podium quoting Bear Bryant. You know, when Mama calls, you got to come home. You know, a man once said that, and you know, and the whole place is going to bubble. Up. Oh yeah, I just think I was going to start I think, touching themselves. Man, and, I just think he likes. Uh, hey, calm down for the. Sorry, kids. <laughs> well, they're well, patting you, themselves. They're patting right. themselves on the back. You just themselves. rubbed your nipples. <laughs> well, that's well, not. You, we're a podcast. Corner. I know I didn't have to say that, but I, you could have been worse when you're saying touch yourself. Um, but yeah, man, no, I don't. I, I think, man, I just I couldn't imagine okay. him leaving Clemson. Sorry, not to get you derailed. But um, but yeah, when you look around these powerhouse programs and who USC has hired and who just any of them, well, you know, Washington, I think probably has made the best hire. Uh, and I don't even know if you'd call them a football school, but Peterson was a great hire. Mm-hmm. But it was after uh, what's his name, right? Sarkeesian. Sarkeesian. Um, it's just hard. You don't – even Florida State – and I, I I don't even have to go through examples. Look at Florida. I'll just keep saying Florida. They have not hired anybody from a power school. They just haven't. A, a, a powerhouse school. Any of their hires that have been good. Spurrier was from Duke. Uh, Muschamp was an assistant. McElwain, Colorado State. Mullen, Mississippi State. Was somebody else in there? Did I forget someone? No, I don't think so. Yeah, nailed it. Um, Zook in the middle between Spurrier. Zook, yeah, and, Zook uh, was uh, – I don't even know where he came from. Special teams coach from the Saints, I think, yeah. we dug up the other day. Um, so, yeah, man, it's just you're not if – you're, if you're thinking that it's like Bob Stoops or Bust, well, man, you're, there's nobody that can make you happy. And the only yeah. thing that's going to make you happy – and, again, you just kind of – you've got to trust that this guy in three years will be a big name. That's what you've got to do, man. People laughed at Florida State for naming Jimbo Fisher head coach and waiting. Many of the people listening to this show probably rolled their eyes. And in 2009, we're like, wow, this is going to be our next head coach? This guy that we just went 7-6 and six with that scored seven, 10 points against Florida, he's our next head coach? Um, so you just don't know. Norvell wouldn't excite anyone. Nope. I get it. Certainly not the two people on this show. Sorry, Mike. But that doesn't mean he won't be a resounding success. You just don't know. And it doesn't mean that if Franklin was hired or if Stoops was hired, but was only halfway, he wasn't all the way in, that he would, you know, Stoops wouldn't be a result. A fully committed Norvell might be better than a 40% committed Bob Stoops. You know what I mean? A guy that you have to wrestle into the job. I'm telling you, man, we don't know. Norvell might be a savant. They all got to start somewhere. You wouldn't have wanted Belichick 20 years ago. I did want Jimbo, though. That worked out right. I wasn't too high on Taggart either. Well, you're two for two. Not doing a victory lap here. (laughs) Two for two. 
You wanted Jimbo. You didn't want Jimbo in uh... – Absolutely. No, I want him as OC, and I want. I was totally fine with him being elevated to the head coach. I believed in him. I just I thought I, – I, you know, I was young and dumb, and, uh, you know, just the whole Saban magic dust. I'm like, yeah, he, he gets it. And I had the whole, well, you know, Bobby's keeping him down. Bobby's detached and let him get the guys he needs. Well, all that and, was true. Yeah. It's crazy how that works sometimes. But, uh, yeah, I mean – But you were in that minority, especially around yeah. the country. Mm -hmm. People were just like, man, this is, that's the best Florida State can do. Yeah, and, and I and see then he people, put together one of the best football teams in college football history. Yeah. And I, I see people talking about Matt Campbell in terms of, man, this is not a splash hire. I was going to, you know, I was looking forward to upping my season tickets and even buying a, a seat in the Champions Club, but I can't for this guy. And it's, and it's again, it's to your point, you're not, they're not going to steal who, away. Yeah, who, you, who would they do want it a Bob Soups? They want a Bob yeah, Soups. That's it, though, right? Bob yeah. Soups, Urban Meyer, and I don't think, I think literally probably maybe split down the middle Florida State fans with Urban Meyer. And obviously that's not happening. Um, but who would because Willie didn't get hit by a bus? Right, right. That's true. Um, who, who? There isn't. There are no splash hires to make, man. I, there just but, aren't. But it's your point. You're talking about just because Mike Norvell, you know, weed might not be high on him, doesn't mean he can't be a resounding success. I do think there's there, there's a profile though. I mean, there's a profile. I think you need to go after when you're looking at a coach. I think multiple stops is a big deal. I think head coaching experience is a big deal. And I know we just talked about Jimbo. He didn't have any. And I, I think Brent Venables will still be a really good hire. But I think Campbell, who's who did it in his home state, like Toledo, and I got I got to start really doing some deep research on him and start looking at some film on Iowa State. But to do what he did at Toledo, which again I know it's a Mac school, it's it's a weird thing. But I know he, he did go into Arkansas and beat Arkansas and when they had Brett Bielema, and they were still decent, you know. I right. Mean, to, to walk into Arkansas on a on a non non conference cupcake pay pay game and come in there and beat them, I think was pretty impressive. And then what he's been able to accomplish as a head coach at a Power 5 program. And I, I know he lost to Kansas State on Saturday. I think they only, maybe only scored 21 points. Um, but to, to win eight games in a place like Iowa State where they don't win eight games, and I know that's that you need to do more than, than win eight games at Florida State to, to keep your job. I understand that. But, again, this is it's the way that people felt about Willie. It's the way I felt about Jimbo. You just think that there's there's more resources here, natural resources, better talent. Yeah, uh, You're going to get a pretty good – you know, uh, assistant coach salary pool to work with. I, I, there's a, there's a certain profile that I think Matt Campbell fits, like more of a hard nosed guy, uh, but still young and vibrant. And I think he can he can do a good job of of connecting with kids and recruiting well. I think again, I think he's a I think he's a really bright, sharp guy. That again, when you walk into a high school and you're in the coach's office and they're asking you about, hey, what do you what do you guys, you know, what are you what are you gonna be running this year? I think Matt Campbell's a guy that gets on that grease board and can draw something up pretty cool and the coach is gonna be like, All right, okay, I see that. And then he's gonna tell his player, like, listen, man, yeah, this this guy knows he's talking about. It's Florida State, you'll be fine there, you're gonna be in good hands. Again, the, the two stops where he's done Iowa State, beating Oklahoma, that you know was a top ten or top five team, top ten team, sorry. TCU that was a top ten team. Um, you know, yeah, those sort of impressive. things those that that is the sort of thing that that's the recipe that you're going to have to go after when you're looking for a new coach. Because, yeah, there's no musical chairs with those with those top five jobs. Like the Georgia, Alabama, Clemson, those guys aren't leaving those jobs to take other college jobs. It's not going to happen. And those are the only splash hires that are out there. Right. Again, there's nobody, even a, a middle of the – just Matt Campbell is about as splashy as you can make a hire, yeah. I think. There's a lot of I, – I really do think there's a lot of colleges that would be like, man, Norvell would be a great hire. Yeah. Well, this will be excited for him. Enjoy yeah. Hey, all right. And you're, it, you're really down on him. I'm going to look him up. You keep talking. And I do wonder, too, how much of this is kind of revisionist history to a certain degree because, you know, people were very high on what Nick Saban was and who he was. But Nick Saban was coming off a couple, not mediocre, but a couple seasons in LSU where they were, you know, they, they, weren't, they weren't competing for the BCS National Championship. Although I think he was only there, what, one year or two years? One, one, I think he was only there one more season, right? Who? Saban at LSU after he won the national title. Yeah, he they left. He left after 04. Yeah, so one season they won ten games that year. Then he goes to the NFL, has some mixed results there. But obviously at that point you bring him back to the college level, you're like that's a huge that's a huge home run sort of hire. Outside of him, who has been the huge big splashy hire? Ohio State maybe getting Urban Meyer. Oh yeah, that's a, that's a, an enormous one. Yeah, I mean, but other than that, I mean, when Florida hired Urban Meyer, that was not a huge splashy hire. Hiring Kirby Smart, it just made sense. It just it, everything had lined up for that, right? It was like, hey, man, he's been he's been coaching under Nick forever. Mark Rick finally left. It makes sense. Let's finally do this. It wasn't a big surprise. It wasn't a big coup. 
Uh, and, and to that point, Urban Meyer wasn't a big coup. He was, he was a, he's a guy that's from the Midwest, looks up to Ohio State, probably only behind Notre Dame in terms of what he really fondly thinks about. So it's hard to well, go get who's these. No, who's well, actually, Harbaugh, Harbaugh, actually, that, that too, Harbaugh is pretty splashy, too. That's a, bit, that's a huge that splash a huge hire, hire, but he's also an alum. Yeah. Um, but Notre Dame got the Cincinnati head coach. Right. That's just – and he where was he before Cincinnati? He was like in a Division two school, I think. Yeah. A good, he was good there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's just no – there's no blueprint for how this works and who's going to be good and who isn't. Um, you know, I, I think I'm, – I'm not nearly as down on Norvell as you are just because he's – what is uh, – what what he's done. I mean, it's not – you win 11 games, that's – that's impressive to me twice. Yeah. And he sustained a program. He didn't take over. I really gen- genuinely thought, number one, he was on the staff at Memphis. Um when Fuente left, and he just kind of kept. Was, I got to look maybe a little bit deeper at what he did at Arizona State. But I know he was the OC at Arizona State. He was in, in Pittsburgh with Todd Graham as well. It's just he hasn't been the head coach at a Power Five program. He's been a head coach at Memphis, which is probably the best Group of Five program over the last five years, I would say. So he he's made, he sustained what Justin Fuente laid down. He sustained that, and maybe even made it a little bit better. Which again, that that's an impressive thing, but it. I don't think it fits the profile. Norvell, just hearing him talk, seeing some of the mic'd up segments that, they, that Memphis has on him, just doesn't strike to me as the – I think he's probably a good play caller. I think he's probably a good offensive game planner. I don't know how much of a program builder he is. I don't know if he has like a true vision for what you need to do in terms of athletic support staff for academics – for nutrition, for strength and conditioning, all these huge pillars that really help build the program and keep it sustained. I don't think you're dealing with a lot of that when you're at Memphis, when you're the OC at Arizona State. That's not your that all these things are being done above your pay grade. Now, Iowa State obviously is not really, you know, soar to the heights of of Power Five football, but they've they've maintained a pretty good standard of football, especially relative to what they are, what they can invest in, who's and what surrounds them, and who they play against. Listen, they got they got to play Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Texas, Baylor. They got to play really programs have been pretty solid year in and year out for the last you know since Matt Campbell's been there, and he's competed with them and he's defeated them. Uh, I think to me that just speaks a lot more. And I think he's a lot more well respected within the coaching community in terms of of his ideas and his background. He's he's a guy that he played defense. He's def, he was a defensive lineman in, in, in college, right. but his whole background now has been offense, offensive coaching. I think that's I think that's kind of a pretty cool dynamic as well. Um, that's why I, I I value him over. Uh, I think Mike the Norvell. one thing, and I and that, uh, granted I haven't done as much research as I, I just as, while you were talking, I'm sure you made some salient points, some great points. I nodded along and said, yeah, right, a couple yeah, times, but nothing. Just right? It's just it's all pops and buzzes. I wouldn't listen to anything. So I was just looking at what he did, and I do think if you get Norvell, well, well Bryles is gone, but I think he's an offensive guy, and they put up, I mean, in 2017, they scored 74 touchdowns. That's and they had, they had 4,355 passing yards. It was the first 4,000-yard season in school history. Sorry. But 74 touchdowns is nuts. And then last year, they had 80 touchdowns. 80 touchdowns. For comparison's sake, the 2013 Florida State team, granted against a tougher schedule, scored 94 touchdowns total. Memphis last year scored 80. The year before that, they set a record with 74. This year, they're 11-1. and one. So I assume the offense is still doing pretty well. So you know going in – that the guy can coach offense, that he knows what he's doing, he has a plan, he has a vision. It's all that other stuff that you don't know, right? Well, I no, get it. I don't think we know that he has a plan and he has a vision. I think we know that he's probably a pretty darn good offensive coordinator well, that's and what probably I mean. a good play for, caller. For his offense, he has a plan and a vision. We don't know what he's going to be as a head coach. But, you know, good grief. Yeah, I'm all over the place. <laughs> trying to find this stat to uh, come back at you with, but I don't know the – but but either way, uh, so he's been there now four years. His fourth year is their best year. That's a very good sign. His first year was a pretty good year, but you can't say he turned Memphis around because Memphis was good under Fuente. But um, he's obviously – he's well-respected as an offensive mind because he, he was an – O's and that's another thing. He was an OC at Pitt, and he was an OC at Arizona State. So at he's been at, program, at Power 5 programs and, and decent football programs. He wasn't at, uh, you know, Vanderbilt as an OC the last few years. He was at Arizona State when they scored a lot of points. So, you know, I, I 
How many years has he been there? I think this is his fourth year. Fourth year. Yeah. There was a coach who, in three seasons, his team scored 37.8 points per game, averaged 470 yards of offense, scored 40 points 20 times in three seasons. That's not a ton. Had six 50-point games, scored 63 times. even had a game where they scored 70 points. That's not a lot. You don't think 20 times scoring 40 points, 20 times over three seasons? 36 games. Yeah, that's, I guess that's a lot. That's Willie yeah. Taggart. Yeah. Willie Taggart, the American Athletic Conference, which is what Mike Norvell's doing. Yeah, but that's, you know, that's where my man Brian Kelly was. Look what he's doing at Notre Dame. He's done a good job at Notre no, Dame. No, the Mac. He's just, the Mac. Was it the Mac? I thought it was oh, no, Cincinnati. Oh, no, Cincinnati, right. No, right I mean, right. but it might but not have been the AAC yeah, then. They weren't the AAC yeah. at that time. Um, yeah, no, I got you, man. I got you. Um, but Willie Taggart wasn't an OC. Um, before that, he wasn't doing good things at Arizona State as an OC before that. Um, but, yeah, man, I get it. I get the I get the hesitancy. I get Is that a word, hesitancy? Yeah. Look at that. What a weird headshot on Brian Kelly's Wikipedia page, by the way. Yeah, folks, if you're listening to this right now and you have access to your – well, I assume you have access to your phone if you're listening to this. Just type in – go to Brian Kelly's Wikipedia page. It looks – it looks like it's something out of like a gangster rap video, I yeah. guess, or a mugshot. Yeah. It's really bizarre. And he was actually at Central Michigan between his stint at Grand Valley State, where he uh, won national championships. Yeah. And um, yeah, they were the Big East, the Bearcats. They went ten and they went ten and three, eleven and three, twelve and zero when he was there. I mean, it's pretty good. Won the conference, went to the Power Six bowls or the New Year Six bowls. Lost to Florida. Wasn't that Tebow? Didn't he play Florida? In their, or he already yeah. left, I yeah, think, but they gone. played Florida he was in, in Tebow's last game. I think Butch Jones took over for him there. So, But that's a – I mean, it's a little better than what Norvell's done, but nothing uh... – Again, there's – and this sounds stupid. I have my – you know, everyone's got their formulas. I got my formula. I just – I got to hear the way the, the heft in a man's voice, the way he talks, the way he commands a room. Oh, um, sure. Mike Norvell just doesn't kind of do it for him. And again, Mike, you know, hey, we, we can laugh about this. We can laugh about this when we're we're in Pasadena. We're in Pasadena. In we're in Miami. Years. You yeah. know, hey man, look look at us now. Who thought we'd be here? Not me. Not I'm going to be the one that he's going to be a fan of because yeah. I was defending his honor. Yeah. And look, folks, I would not do a cartwheel if they named the Memphis head coach as the next head coach at Florida State. Um, but. I, you know, I don't know how many people are going to do cartwheels for Iowa State's head coach either. I think he's a very good coach. I've said it because the NFL teams apparently are interested in him. But um, or that was the word anyway. That might be his agent saying that. But, um, you know, there's just no guarantee either one of these guys works. There just isn't. Or Franklin or whoever. Well, so no what's guarantee. your point of, of, of bringing that up then? I mentioned that because – Because you getting upset. Are you getting – saying that wasn't a splash the hire? The royal you or are you him? looking at me? Royal you. Okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The guy's going to have – we'll know. Like I, Scott Satterfield said, within a year and a half, right? 21 games, some would say. <laughs> we'll know in 21 games if at least the guy has an idea what he's doing and the ship has been turned around. And you won't know before that. You just won't. So um, – you can get upset. You can say Florida State should have done better. Norvell's a bum. I can't believe they went back to the same conference to hire another coach. I know Willie was in the Pac-12 for one year, but you know yeah. what I mean. He was hired because of what he did at South Florida. Um, you know, winning. You know, beating those teams isn't doesn't do it for me. I get all that. I get the hesitation, but you don't know. Just like Aslan doesn't know. Just like I don't know. I thought Taggart would be a success. Um, that didn't work out. I don't. I don't know either. But you know. The, Life is littered with people be- making wrong assumptions and being wrong about people without giving them a chance. It happens all the time. I, I mean, if Twitter was around when they hi- – I, mean, I guess Twitter was around when they when they made Davo their, their permanent head coach. When was it? Tw- ten? Nine? I thought it was uh, eight. Oh, no. But then he, he – Twitter was like a 2009 phenomenon. Oh, Twitter was, yeah. So Or when when he got extended after losing to South Carolina and they extended him okay. for three years. Right. I, I would love to see what Twitter was like then because people were – and, you know, I know we can – I bring up Dabo a lot. That's an extreme example because he's turned Clemson into a juggernaut. There's been a lot of other coaches that people knew – after two years they wanted him gone and it never got any better. So I get that angle too. I'm just saying we don't we don't know. You don't know how it's going to turn out. You don't Norvell might be an offensive genius that if he had Tamari and Terry, that guy would have had 1700 yards and 22 touchdowns this year. And he'd be able to scheme around a bad offensive line better than Bryles did. And I think Bryles did a fine job. Wasn't great, but he did a pretty good job this year. But Norvell might be 
20 degrees better than him. Then what? Then you're averaging 38 points a game. You never know. You just don't know. I'm trying to think what jobs have come open in the last two years that Norvell would have been plucked up by by, I, by now. Yeah, I don't I I don't know that like you I guess it's like I guess Memphis football could become like pulse of basketball. Remember they had it was like Tubby Smith, Steve Robinson. Like you would you would go to Tulsa for three years. I think Danny Manning is well, there. Arkansas now State there. was that. Arkansas State at Gus and then Hugh Freeze and then yeah, Brian, Har- right. Brian Harson. Walt Bell. Wasn't Walt Bell an Arkansas State guy? Yeah. The great Walt Bell at UMass. The great Walt Bell. Um, so, yeah, Tulsa basketball. Better days ahead for the well, Minutemen. Come. Yeah, better days ahead. Well, he getting killed by awful teams, too. But Tulsa basketball was like Tubby, Steve Robinson, and somebody else. They all coached at Tulsa, did well enough there to entice bigger programs, then went on to, you know, uh, coach there. Maybe Memphis football is that now. Um, I think so. It could be. And so Norvell might, I guess you could say he could be your Steve Robinson. Um, and Fuente is the Tubby Smith of that. Uh, Danny Manning had a stint in uh Yeah, who else, though? I feel like there was Nolan Richardson, I think, was from Tulsa. Correct. Like Arkansas. That is correct. I mean, they had a run. It's a pretty remarkable run of, like, Tulsa was where you'd, where you'd go for three years and then you'd turn it into a big-time job. Bill Self. <laughs> who? Yeah. Oh, see, see what I'm saying? That's a good analogy. Tulsa basketball, man. They actually replaced Steve Robinson. Cradles. Yeah. yeah, oh, they, they went from Steve Robinson to Bill, Bill Self. Self. Oh, that's too bad. And I bet there were some Tulsa fans who were like, golly, we lost another coach. Why do all these ACC schools or big-time schools come and take we our just, coaches? We need Steve Robinson. Who is Bill Self? We just hired the coach from Oral Roberts? What? Yeah, exactly. We're be- we're Tulsa. So, again, you don't know. It's hard. It's just – I guess the moral of all this yammering is uh, it's really hard – it's hard. the The chemistry is hard. It's not the chemistry. It's the mathematics of it. Of what does an eleven one record at Memphis mean in relation to a Florida State football coach? What does an eight and five record at Iowa State mean for a Florida State football coach? How do you do that math in your head? How do you do that um, and, and figure out what's more impressive? In in how much does it come down to the interview and the binders? And who has a plan and who has a, an ability to think they're going to fix things quickly and ha- it knocks out the interview better, I guess. Can you believe he said that that he doesn't even know it was in the binder? Like two I his, saw that. Two yeah. of his assistants did. Yeah, like, that oh, hurt you a little bit. Uh, that. Come on. Come on, Ed. Oh, I don't know what's in the binder. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I'm just going to look back at last season. He lost to Navy by one point. He lost to Tulane, 16 points. Lost to UCF by one. Lost to Missouri by 32 points. Lost again to UCF when it mattered in the American Championship game by 15, and then lost to Wake Forest by three in the bowl game. Okay, so some close losses. I, mean, I just mentioned like games that were three scores, but I mean, I don't well, there was know a one on pointer, a three pointer, a, a UCF. Was, they he, lost to UCF twice, and that was a good UCF team, right? And this year he's lost to Temple, and Temple is currently eight and four. What was the score of the Temple game? It was a close one. I, think I remember that. I think I watched that game. It was twenty. It was thirty to twenty. They lost it by two points. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, again, Matt Campbell with the loss of Kansas State. Again, now he's the. They're the only team in the last three seasons that have not lost a game by more than two scores. They lost to Iowa. That's the one thing you can say, and somebody uh, posted about it. I think it's it's unfair, but you you can say it. Is I don't think he's beaten Iowa in the four years he's been there. He has not beaten his his chief rival. Come on, Matty C. We can't have that. Yeah. So that that's a bummer. But he lost by one point. Lost to Baylor by two points. Lost to Oklahoma State by a touchdown. Lost to Oklahoma by one point, and they lost to Kansas State. Sounds by Sounds like he panics there at the end of games. He can't finish the drill. How about coaching your players to finish the drill? In reality, I think either one of these guys. I don't know, but I think either one of these guys are a significant upgrade. Absolutely. And that's well, not more. Well, I don't know about just significant. That's upgrade. a more important thing. That that to me is more important than anything. But there's so much more than being a head coach. Like, I don't doubt that Norvell and Campbell are very good coaches and know the sport and can scheme and out, can out-coach other sidelines. I didn't see that a lot the last two years, but that doesn't mean Willie Taggart can't do it. It just didn't look like that was happening. I think these guys are very good. They've proven it. I mean, you can't, you can't almost beat Oklahoma with Iowa State players and not be a very good coach. 
You just can't do it. Willie – Or have built a good program to actually defeated them yeah, two years ago. And, and to, TCU and all – yeah, And obviously. to continue to – and was it, these, weren't, these weren't fluky wins because he continues to compete with those teams. But can he recruit Florida? Yeah. Can he recruit Florida you to the point that – You can recruit Iowa – if you can recruit Iowa State, you know what? But I think George recru- Washington again. said if you can recruit to Ames, you can recruit to anywhere. <laughs> That's right. I remember reading that. But it, my point is he's not – again, I, it's really impressive what he's done. I don't know that he's beating Texas and Oklahoma right. for any He's getting recruits. option B guys. And- he's got to come to Florida State and get option A guys. That's yeah. the rule at Florida State. That's what you have to do. Alphas, can, real blue chips, can, which I think Willie kind of probably struggled with managing those those egos. And that, that's, a fair, that's a fair criticism because the, the kind of player recruiting at Iowa State is, is really thankful for having a Division One offer. Sure. Guys at Florida State, hey, man, I'm here. I could have been at Georgia, jerk. I could yeah. have been at LSU. Thanks. So you is he, is he going to be a guy? Because you need him, man. Florida State is a – I mean, I guess you could build Florida State on a bunch of two and three stars. I don't think that's the way to go. Nope. Um, but, I, you know, are you going to be able to beat out Dabo, Kirby, Saban, Mullen for the type of recruits that you need to be a national championship head coach? Because he's never had to do it. Never – I don't know that he's ever been – I mean, we could look at his roster. I can't imagine he's beaten out an Oklahoma or a Texas or an Alabama for any recruits. I don't even know if he's recruited against them. Um, and you know how sure. you know how excited Willie was would to go on the recruiting trail wearing garnet and gold, knowing that it was a different deal. Um, it didn't really pan out well for him after the first month. But you know, Matt, I, you know, it, is he going to be able to sell kids? Is he going to be able to get kids to come in and believe in his vision? Is he going to be able to point to close losses to Oklahoma or big wins over Oklahoma yeah. and say this is what we did here? Wait till you see what I can do at Florida yeah, State. I beat Texas. I, he, I beat Oklahoma. Yeah. I mean, I beat all the big boys. I, I think he, you know, I think there's a chance he can, but that's just it. It's the, um, you don't know. Thrasher, Coburn, they don't know if he can do that. But they do know that he's a, a very good football coach. And I, I think when you're a sharp, smart guy, which I think he is, more so than Mike Norvell, I think that sells in recruiting. I think that, that gives parents confidence. That gives parents reassurance and comfort that they're, they're, Kid's going to go play for a, a good dude, but a guy that's also going to set their kid up for uh, future success. I mean, Alan Lazard, who's, you know, had like three catches for 100 yards and a touchdown for the Packers, he went to Iowa State. David Montgomery, who's been a pretty good uh, addition, I think, for the Bears, went to Iowa State. I mean, he's, he's he was a, a Packer, too, wasn't he? David Montgomery, or is he always Ty Montgomery? You're talking about Ty Montgomery. Oh, okay. All the right. one that wore 88, but then would still yeah, play running play back. Yeah, running back, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, there's he's had a couple guys at Iowa State that have now gone on. I mean, guys that he's recruited, that he's developed, that have gone on to the NFL and have – uh, become real successful uh, players out there. But, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at his – I mean, the, the 2019 recruiting class, he does have one four-star, a running back from Quincy, Illinois. Um, let's look at this guy's offer sheet and uh, maybe see – yeah, I mean, Illinois, Michigan State, Iowa. Yeah, you know, not, you know what I'm not, saying. Yeah, not Oklahoma, yeah. not Texas. You're not know, beating those guys out. But, uh, again, I, I think, you know, maybe not year one, and this goes to a point somebody was complaining that we don't know what we're talking about because we said recruiting will be okay. Recruiting is what it is right now. If you got hired today, if you get hired in three days, it is what it is. You're going to, as a head coach, you're going to hit the ground running. You're going to try to keep as many of the guys that are already committed that you yeah. can. And maybe you bring in a, a player or two that you recruit at your other stop. Maybe that big four star running back that he beat out Illinois and Michigan State for. Well, no, he, he already enrolled. That was last year. Oh, boy. Right now, that's isn't, too bad. Isn't, isn't he, what are we looking at 2020, man? How are we doing in 2020? 2020? Some of these kids might be coming with them. There's a guy from Fort Lauderdale, but he's a three-star. Dunn, what is he? All bunch of three. A defensive back. Okay, we need O-linemen. They got any O-linemen they can bring with them? Yeah, they got a guy named Brady Peterson. How that big is he? sounds really good. 6'5", 265. Oh, boy, that's <laughs> that's what you need, some real beef. Well, how about Tyler Miller from Jefferson, Iowa, 6'8", 290. I like that. Who'd he beat out? Um, Click on him. Who do you, who else was he offered by? <laughs> I imagine probably Iowa as well because he's from. Um, let's see here, uh, Minnesota, Nebraska, uh, Virginia's on his offer sheet. UCF. Okay, I don't. That's not bad. I don't mind those those teams. Yeah. So, so you remember the rant I went on after the game against? Well, Florida? I'm not done. Real okay, quick, sorry. Go know, ahead. In terms of recruiting, people got on our, our, our case about it. Uh, that Wendy from Key West, Key West Wendy, whatever her name is. Um, it is what it is right now with the recruiting. Whoever shows up is going to have the time to keep the guys in in the, in the fold. Maybe bring a guy or two that he likes at his other stop, and then go make a couple stops and try to pull two or three other kids. Yeah, you're basically punting on this class. Yeah, I mean, you're not punting. You're going to get players, it's and not some gonna of them will be, be good. But you're not going to be top ten or top eight with this class. Uh, I don't think you can. It was a. It really was a, a miracle that that Willie did what he did. But he also brought two or three guys from Oregon with him that were big time guys. Bolden. 
uh, Harrison maybe. Was there another one yeah. in there? Uh, Warren, Warren Thompson. Thompson. So, uh, you know, th- three huge stars in the Florida State program right. right now. But not taking shots at those guys, but they haven't panned out to be great so far in two years. But either way, he brought guys with him that were big-time guys. Iowa State has none of that. He, Matt Campbell, if he came, isn't bringing a bunch of Iowa State guys with him. I, or he might, but you're not going to be floored like, oh, my gosh, we got – we got four five star, four four stars, and some All Americans coming with Willie. What a great hire! It's just what it is going to be, but it's worth it. Like you, you, the recruiting, the twenty twenty one class is what you worry about, and the twenty twenty two class. This is just, I hate to say it, but the way the early signing period is, you're just cobbling together as much as you can yeah. in a quick amount of time. You're going to lose some. They're going to fall through your fingers. It happens. Um, but that doesn't mean that uh, you give up on the class. But it also doesn't mean that you can go in thinking, okay, we're going to make a run at the fourth best class in the country. It's, it's not happening. It's just not. But more importantly than these 20 to 25 kids, you know, you might lose eight of them. Okay, that's, that's terrible. It's too bad. But if you're getting the coach that sets you up for a decade of success, mm-hmm. it's worth missing out on one class yeah. and just being having the 26th best class. And in this day and age, you have the transfer portal. Yeah, and man, the portal is wide open right now too, folks. Yeah, and in your in Iowa State, you have a pretty good feel for junior colleges out there, Kansas and, yeah, and such, and you true. can probably you know, do some things there. So I'm not too worried about that. But what I was going to say real quick yeah. when you brought up the offensive lineman was like the rant I went on on Saturday and then again in yesterday's show about the defense and how I'm sick of it. Sure, and this isn't breaking news. But you got to you got to get some linemen in here, man. You've mm-hmm. got to. This is disastrous. What's going on here? And it's pathetic. It's pathetic. It's it's three different coaches. It makes no sense. None. How do you keep. It's three different that? coaches. Yeah. Three guys that have gotten paid by, by other big time universities. One that has a national championship ring. And this is and this is how they coach. This is how they're getting coached. You have no real. I mean, maybe some of these guys, some of these young guys, are good. But this is pathetic. What's going on in the offensive line? It's Florida State, man. This is nuts that you have the 110th best offensive line in the country, and that might be being, being polite, or 108th. Fix it. Well, yeah. Figure out a way to fix it, man. Whoever – that's the number one question out – well, no, number one is defense. What are your defensive philosophies? Who, who would you bring in? My second question is, how do you fix this? And I would just show them the last eight minutes of the Florida game. Yeah. How do you fix this? What is going on here? Because we've got a guy that's done it before at a high level as an offensive line coach. And he got – he's flummoxed, apparently. Mm-hmm. And the guy before him had no chance. And the guy before him obviously wasn't doing a good job either because he loaded him with this stuff. What is going on and how do you fix it? Well, you know, Juwan is just not what anybody thought he was going to be. Landon Dickerson left and Josh Ball put his hands on a girl. Well, yeah. That but was a really I, good – that 2016 but, class was really highly recruited. I don't you know. Uh, the one guy – I think Josh Ball is very good. Dickerson, obviously, was always their most talented. Josh one. Ball would be the best tackle on this team if he was still Sure, on but that's not saying much. That's like saying but I'm the best better. looking guy in this room. That's whoa, not a big bar. Oh, you like that? Oh, that's sting a little wow. bit. Best ball – best best head, maybe. Right, I should say go. that. Um, so, but, yeah, like Dickerson's the one guy that I think panned out of that class where you're like, yeah, that's a real good football player. Ball would be – he would be average, which is better than what they've had, mm. but he's still average. Yeah. Get some good players in here, All man. Right, it's, right. Not, it's, you don't ha- it's not illegal to recruit really good offensive linemen. Not okay, not average. Go get awesome offensive linemen. Get six of them. Georgia has nine. They get three or four every year. Alabama's just loaded with them. You're Florida State, man. This is pathetic. It's just ridiculous, and it's inexcusable three years in a row. Recruit 25 offensive linemen. Make them all be offensive linemen recruits. Out of those 25, tw- you can, uh, just get 20% of them that can play, and yeah. you got your starting offensive line. Yeah, the other 20 can get in the portal, and then you get your skill guys next year. Just this is It's just nuts. That end of that game was just – I mean, I know Florida's got a good defense, but it ain't that good. No. Anyway. The antithesis of – the horrible offensive line is the awesomeness that is Dr. Heather Birch. Let's talk about her for a second. At Birch Orthodontics, they know what a difference a beautiful and healthy smile can make in your life. They take the time to get to know you and perform a thorough exam so that they can make an individualized treatment plan just for you or your child. They use the latest technology in a warm and comfortable environment. So whether you are interested in traditional metal or clear braces or clear aligners, they can give you the smile you deserve. They know investing in your smile means investing in your future. And at Birch Orthodontics, they are honored to be a part of your smile. Mile journey. Serving Tallahassee for 16 years and supporting the Knolls since forever. Check them out at birchorthodontics.com. B 
B-U-R-C-H-Orthodontics.com. We're back. She's still awesome. Dr. Heather Birch, give her a shout out. I'm going to do I'm going to make the call. I got to make the call. I got to get my life fixed. Get my jaw fixed. Everything else will fall in line once my jaw is fixed. My smile journey. Uh, I meant to ask you this like in the first three minutes of the show, but here we are 55 minutes later. When am I going to do another? Uh, we need to do another reading, too. We need to get some more. Uh, I need a reading, another Heather Birch commercial. I okay, do yeah, one. yeah, all right. Uh, can we do one with her? Yeah, let's do it. I've never met her. Okay. She advertised on both my shows. She's a very big fan and, and been great to me and my family and everything else. I want to meet her. I want to have her on the show. I want to ask her like her favorite Florida State member. That's what we're doing. Okay. We're going to do it sometime in the um, – in the Maybe doldrums of December. In the doldrums of December, we're going to have Heather Birch on the show. All right. I meant to ask you this like in the first three minutes of the show. It's probably a little bit too late to ask you this now. Uh, the timing of this, obviously with it not happening, um, it just it can't be Bob Stoops because what would the weight be? And people are, you know, I mean, <laughs> what would the weight be? Uh, yeah, that no, doesn't make sense. No, of course. So, again – May, it can't. Maybe Nor. Maybe isn't Nor, isn't Norvell because Norvell's got a game to practice for. Now we mentioned that once the seasons are over, you can start going full steam ahead. That's why I feel like hoping has to be kind of a Campbell Franklin. I mean, maybe those are your your two kind of lead guys. And again, Franklin to me just doesn't make sense. That's why I keep coming coming back to to Franklin or to Campbell rather. I, I guess I'm I'm rambling here. Basically, it just goes back to the fact that people are, are panicking, and I don't think you really should panic because now that the season is over, I think you, you, you work on agreements and principle, and then once the season is finally over, and it's only been over for you know two and a half days now, then you know things really get firmed up. Be, I'm not panicked if the, if the hire isn't made on Wednesday. No, no. I mean, you shouldn't be. I mean, I would be surprised if I just couldn't imagine a scenario where it's not Sunday at the latest that the rumors come out. Like if it is Norvell and you're like, okay, we're not going to say anything. We'll let you coach your final game and then you can tell your team. I get that. You don't want that. To, he might be like, man, I do not want a distraction for these guys. They deserve this. I want them to get and went, get over wherever they'd go in New Year's Six game. I will do it on Sunday, but not a second before. Please don't leak it. Um, I could see that. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. Nobody else that's on your list is coaching anymore. Yeah. So what would be the holdup, you know? That, that to me, is my thinking. Um, so if it's not the next day or two, then that would lead you to believe it's the guy that's still coaching. Which, hey, I'm still all aboard the Venables train, baby. Yeah. And he's got a game plan for Bryce Perkins. He ain't got time to distract his kids. Um, but on Sunday, maybe even Saturday night after the game, he goes to the podiums like, it's been great. And then he gives a little <laughs> little – Chop. Old chop. Yeah. Say go Knowles. Starts motion. See you hand. next year, Dabo. So you got to come to Tallahassee next year, Dabo, and then he walks off the podium. Oh, apparently, the coordinators at Clemson are candidates for the USF job along with Willie. Yeah, I saw that Willie was. Uh, I that'd be great. I mean, that'd be something. If Tony they, Elliott and Jeff Scott, they're saying, are also candidates for the for that. Could they job. be co-head coaches? They just go up their coaching ladder together as co everything. Why not? That'd be a really good idea. Hey, let's. Isn't talk that weird though that they're both co's? I yeah. mean, they're both they're both. Uh, Potential hires, yeah. Like, can you just get like, get away from me? Yeah, like, like why, dude, are we, why, are, why are we, why are we competing the hip so against much? each yeah. other? Yeah, why don't you stay here at Clemson and I'll go be the head coach there? I almost don't want to talk about basketball because somebody DM'd me and was just beside themselves that we didn't talk about basketball. Oh, all right. So let's talk about basketball. Well, Did they we are not playing. Talk about basketball. Well, we made a brief mention at the end of the show. So I mean, you might have been so upset that you didn't even bother listening oh. to the entire thing. All right. Uh, yeah, they play that Indiana be. today. They do. 9 o'clock at Indiana. Um, first time, I think, Florida State's ever played in that building. Yeah. Leonard was excited about it. Assembly Hall, right? Assembly it? Hall, yeah. Um, Who they got? Archie Miller? Their yes. Coach? Yeah, and they're 7-0. and They haven't played Ooh. anybody. Are they ranked? No, because they haven't played anybody. Okay. Um, but they, they're like sixth in the nation in scoring, and they're third in the nation in scoring margin because of who they played. Um. But so this will be their first real test, but it's going to be a big test for Florida State too. A road game at night, weekday. It's a good. It's been a crazy schedule for them. This will be their ninth game. Florida State's ninth game. It'll be the fifth away from home. They've defeated Western Illinois, Portland State, North Alabama, Troy, Princeton, Louisiana Tech, and South Dakota State. It's a really bizarre start to a season for Indiana. God, I, mean, I mean, I guess they got Kentucky coming up, maybe. But what kind of non-conference schedule is that? 
He maybe has a real young team and knew it couldn't afford see, to play anybody good. I don't see Kentucky on here. They got Florida State, then they have Wisconsin, and then UConn. That's pretty. All right, so they pretty, got well, Wisconsin's a uh, conference game, but yeah, yeah, Florida State and UConn. I guess it's like you just wonder what they're doing with their. Uh, got Notre Dame on the twenty first. Oh, there you go. Okay, that's good non conference game. So they backloaded their non conference schedule. Arkansas on the twenty ninth. Okay, I see what you're doing, Archie. If you still, if you actually are the coach. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it'll be a good test for Florida State. They got to play better offensively, but I do think what's what's been so uh, I don't know. I guess just what surprising, what, not surprising because they're always good defensively, but um, are they're always pretty good defensively? But the fact the way they played defense really all season, except for the Western Carolina game, where they get, they just kept getting open threes and knocking them down, um, is really a good harbinger of like. How the how good this team can be because I do think they'll be better offensively. You're not gonna Mim J Walker, he's a he's a he's a decent college basketball player, but he can shoot. Trent Forrest and Devin Vassell are very good. Mm-hmm. Patrick Williams has a chance to be very good. Mm-hmm. You've got some offensive pieces, not a ton. You've got Hope four of them. So. Yeah, Lenich, you got some um, big guys going to yeah. screen and roll. And that kid Boss is a, a a much better athlete than I thought he was. He's got some bounce to him. He's not or, fouling as much. I feel like he's kind of – Well, he's slowed down on that. Yeah. But they got some pieces, and they're going to be better. But the good news is they they are this defensively. It's really uh, – not, they're not going to hold everybody to 34% shooting. They're going to be playing some very good teams here coming up Tuesday night, in fact. And they're also going to be – teams get to scout them more and know how to attack them. But they play hard, which Florida State always does. They play a lot of guys. They're unselfish. I uh, asked Leonard on Monday, like, what what do you think his identity of the team is? He's like, well, we play hard, play pretty good defense. We're really unselfish. But, man, we got a long way to go offensively. Right. And he always says that. We're not taking any bows. We're not far right. from a finished product. But it's true, man, because I do think when you start thinking about the ceiling of this team, maybe it's a little higher than I gave them credit for at the beginning of the season because how hard they, how good they are on defense. And I do think Williams will start playing more Vassell and Forrest will start playing. I mean, they're they're very good players, but neither one of them had great games over the weekend, and they still won both of those games, um, shooting under fifty percent both of them. So uh, Vassell, man, I just think has a chance to be a star, and so does Patrick Williams. So anyway, they're both young. One's a sophomore that hasn't played a ton. One's a true freshman. So those two, along with Forrest and Walker, you got a nice little core guy, group of guys that can get their own shots and and be good offensively, but it's going to be a struggle at times. You know, I you know I'm I don't know what the spread is in that game, but I wouldn't be stunned if they lost that game. Um, I'm just glad they're ranked. The rest of the country noticed. Seventeenth. Yep, seventeenth in the country. Yeah, I asked the question because you had pointed it out. You know, I asked uh, Raekwon Gray, who goes by the nickname Turk, which his grandma called him because when he was a baby, he had a big old belly and little stumpy limbs. So he looked him, like a turkey. Looked like a turkey. All right, nice. So then. Um, so they became Turk, kind of like you were Turkey. I was Turk. Right. My, that was my nickname growing up for my dad, but it was short for Turkey because I acted like a turkey, I guess. Like Brady's nickname is uh, Goof, uh, short for Goofball. That's not nice. Well, Goof isn't nice. Goof is a bad nickname. Goofball is very fitting for Brady. But I, I did ask him about, is that the recipe this season, is the is the just win games in the 60s? And, you know, he kind of – he laughed it off, and so did Devin Vassell, basically saying that it just, you know, CY's talked about it to them that, you know, you know defense travels, especially, yeah. you know, this early in the season. So it, I, I think CY pointing that out to them, like, listen, y'all, uh, you know, defense will travel, defense will carry us. I think that, that probably is a concerted effort to uh, really shore up that part of the game while they hopefully the offense develops. Yeah, and then you, 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 it's hard not to do this, in my opinion anyway, for me, it's hard not to look ahead to next year. When they got superstar, what are you doing? It's December. I know, but like when, when you look at Vassell and you look at Patrick Williams, and you're like, okay, how, and MJ Walker's not going anywhere. You wouldn't think two and a half point favorite Indiana is. Yeah, so it's not an upset. I'm sure if Florida State loses tomorrow, there'll be headlines that say Indiana upsets number 17 Florida State. But it's it's not an upset. It's basically a pick 'em game, um, and it's on the road. It's in December. It's, it's that's going to be a very hard game to win. A hard place to play. But um, when you look at where this program is, where with all these young guys, you're losing essentially Trent Forrest off this team. Maybe Vassell and maybe Vassell gets a hair up his butt and decides to test the waters. Um, but man, he's—I don't know that he's ready physically at all to compete with those guys. He is still really skinny. Um, so if you look to next year and you lose Forrest, an all-time great Seminole, but then you have the the—I just I blanked on his name, Barnes. 
the big yeah. time recruit coming in. Yeah, Scotty. Yeah, Scotty. along with uh, along with Patrick Williams, who I think has a chance to be very good, and Devin Vassell, who's a burgeoning star. Man, Florida State's set up again, in my opinion. As long as they keep playing defense like this, they're set up for another run. Leonard just keeps doing it. He does. Keeps doing it. Now we get we got to get a football equivalent of we, Leonard. Yeah. Although they don't go six years without getting to the postseason. Your first six years, like Leonard did, that's not a way to set it up. Not a good idea. Anyway, all right, that's a wrap for We're today. We're done. We're done. Next show, maybe in Corey's car out front more. Look at the Bowden Are statue. we doing one if they don't make a hire? Are we going to do one tomorrow? Just to know. talk more about the same stuff? Who knows? Cliffhanger. <laughs> Perfect. Have a great one, everybody. If you want an adventure, you could climb a mountain. Or ride dune buggies through the desert. Or you could just head to your neighborhood Zaxby's. Introducing the Smokehouse Cheddar Barbecue and Southwest Chipotle Filet Sandwich Meals. They're brand new and they'll take your taste buds to wild and exciting new places. Both feature our famous hand-breaded chicken and they're both available for a limited time. Only at your neighborhood Zaxby's. And don't miss Jumanji The Next Level, only in theaters.